If you happen to pick up the new Luminar Neo Panorama stitching extension recently, and now you need help learning how to install and use it, look no further. Help is right here. Hi, I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor and in this video I'll show you how to use the new extension for Luminar Neo Panorama Stitching. You can do basic panoramas as well as more advanced things like HDR and even a panorama from a video. So if you're ready to start stitching some panos, let's get started. The first thing you need to do is install the new extension. If you've already purchased it or you have the pro plan, just go to the catalog module and click the little puzzle piece in the upper right corner that says extras. Just scroll down and on the third row, right after magic light, you'll now see panorama stitching. Just click the install button and you'll be ready to go. I've already done that. If you don't see it showing up there, you may need to update your Luminar Neo version first. Just go to the Luminar Neo menu and check for updates, or you can click on the Luminar Neo logo and look for updates there if you're on Windows. Once you've installed it, make sure that the right hand side panel is visible. If it's not, just click on this icon here in the far right corner and it will show up. Now you'll see panorama stitching right below the upscale extension. Using this little arrow on the right here, I've just closed all of the ones above it up or collapsed them just so they don't take up as much room. Now you can see how to get started using the panorama stitching extension. You need to select the images that you want to merge together. You can do that two ways, either a series of images that you photographed across a scene, two or more, or from a video. I'll show you both. This is the first set of images I'm going to use. One tip for photographing your panoramas is to make sure that the horizon is as level as possible and that you overlap from one image to the next by about 30%. So when the program is attempting to stitch them together, it can find the commonalities between one image and the next and merge them successfully. You'll also notice that the exposures from one image to the next are fairly consistent in this case as well as the color balance. These things will all help you have a more successful panorama merge. Now just select the images, in this case I'm choosing three, and drag them and drop them into the panorama stitching extension. This little button here, you see a circle with three dots inside. This is the settings for this tool. Click it and you'll see this pop up. I recommend turning on chromatic aberration, Devignette, and possibly distortion correction as well. Try the images both ways and see which one works better. When you're photographing your panoramas, if you're using a slightly longer lens, you'll actually get less distortion. Just take more images because Luminar Neo can handle a lot of images. So take as many as you need using a little bit longer lens and you won't get that lens distortion in the first place. So I'm going to leave this one unchecked. You'll notice there's also an option at the bottom here to remove all the files. So if you decide you don't want to use this set of images, you can just click it and they will be removed from the extension. Likewise, when you hover over the thumbnails inside the extension, you can see there's a little X on the top right corner. If you've dropped an extra image in by accident, you can always just remove that one by clicking the X. If there's more than three images, you can just click this arrow to scroll through and double check. Now all we have to do is click start. The panorama stitching window pops up and you start to see it working on processing your images. Once it's analyzed them and tentatively stitched them together, now you have some options. You can rotate the image by grabbing the corner like this. Make sure that your cursor shows that little corner arrow. If you don't see that, if you see a hand or a plus sign, just move it further away. If you want to make the image bigger, just use either the scroll bar on your mouse if you have one, or in my case, I have a trackpad on my laptop and I'm just using two fingers like this to stretch it out and enlarge it. Now we can see better if the tilt is correct. 
you can also adjust the perspective. Now this is something that is really cool. If you've used Lightroom's Merge to Panorama or even Photoshop's, you don't get that option. You get to choose the projection, which I'll cover in a moment, but in Lightroom, all you can do is choose the projection and then Lightroom decides how to merge it. In Photoshop, you don't even get a preview. So let's see how this works. If you just use the hand, click on the image and drag up or down, you'll notice that you can shift it and adjust it this way. So depending on where you grab it, you can totally change the look and the blend. So you can get it just how you want it. The other thing that I mentioned a moment ago is projections. This is how the program is going to analyze and merge your images. It's similar to the ones in Photoshop. In fact, they have similar names. You'll see them down here at the bottom, and if you hover over, you'll see the name. The first one is spherical, and as you can see by the little icon, it treats your images like they are inside of a sphere or a ball. The second one is cylindrical. Likewise, this is like your images inside a cylinder. I find that this one tends to stretch everything a little bit vertically, so try each of them and see which one works best for your set of images. The next one, Mercator, is based on the method of mapping the globe. So similar to taking a globe of the Earth and making it into a flat map, that's the method that is being used with that projection. The other two, Plane and Fisheye, are a little bit more specific and I haven't found those to work with any of my images yet. And I'm guessing it is because I don't have fisheye images or I don't want a fisheye look. And planar has to be photographed in a specific way. You'll see what I mean. Let's go through each of them. So this one is spherical. Let's choose cylindrical. See what I mean? It got a little bit longer. So it's kind of like you're seeing each strip of the image inside of a cylinder. I don't see a lot of difference between spherical and mercator a little bit longer again and planar now you see the difference right so planar let me just zoom it in a little bit gives you a completely different type of look right I have had a few that worked well this way but for the most part I'm using one of the first two and finally fisheye in this case it's not so bad so you really have to sort of play around with the perspective the tilt and the projection to get the result that you're looking for with each set of images. This is not a completely automated process, and I like that about Luminar Neo because it gives you more control over the final result. I'm gonna go with something like that, and I've chosen Spherical. The next step is to just choose Stitch. So click that, and you'll be taken to the Crop window. On the Crop window, now you'll notice two things on the left. We can actually go back a step, which is kind of cool, and we get back here, and the Maximize Crop Area button next to it. It's applied by default, but I find that usually I have to arrange or move the image around inside the crop, similar to when you're using Composition AI inside Luminar Neo. So that looks pretty good. Make note that if you decide to do something like this, you're going to have missing bits where the image is cut off. Luminar does not automatically fill that in as it does not have a content aware fill yet as part of this tool. I'm hoping that that's something that they add with a future update for the panorama stitching. So just make note that if you crop in this way, you will have some information missing that you're going to have to fill in somehow. So I'm just going to crop it like this and let's try something like that. So I've got corners a little bit missing. And I'll do that on purpose to show you how to quickly fill it in. Now, once we click crop, you've got one more chance to review everything and go back a step or two if you need to make any corrections. And if you're happy with that, just click save. I'm going to go back and just crop up a little bit higher, about like that. Click crop and save. Like the other extensions here on the right hand side, Luminar Neo makes a new folder to put your stitch panoramas in. Here's the one that I just created. 
Now you'll notice that there are some edits that have been applied. So if I go to the edit panel, you'll see that it's done some cloning for me, which is interesting. So in essence, there is a content aware fill, but I found that it's a bit hit and miss. Sometimes it does this and sometimes it doesn't. So I'm not sure how to get that activated. There isn't a checkbox or a choice to apply content aware fill at this time. So that's something I'll be giving my feedback to the developers about. If we take a look at what the cloning has done, it's just filled in some of the top of the window here where we were missing some information. So I could just continue to fill that in like so. And this is pretty straightforward because we've got the sky and it's a similar tone all the way across and it's pretty easy to fill in. So just like that, we could fill in the missing parts. And there you have it. Then you could continue editing your image from here in Luminar Neo as per usual. Let's take a look at another more complex example. Here I have 27 different images of the Lisbon skyline. You'll notice that they're kind of taken all over the place. And this one is designed to take multiple rows of images and stitch them together. So let's see how Luminar Neo's new panorama extension handles that. I'm just going to select them all, drag them in, make sure the same options are checked off. And now you can see that if you want to see the rest of the images, you just have to click the little left and right arrows. Now let's start and get to the processing. The more images you drag into this extension, especially if they are raw files, the longer it's going to take to process to get to this first step. I'm talking through this because I want you to see real time how long this is taking. I have a pretty fast processor on my computer and 64 gigs of RAM. So usually my computer works pretty quickly. So if you find it's running slowly, try not to be too impatient. Because as I said, the more images you give it, the longer it's going to take because it has to analyze every image and figure out how they fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. And this brings me to another tip when you're photographing your panos. Make sure you have enough images, okay? So this one was taken like this, sort of all over the place. These are not my images, by the way. They were provided by Skylab as samples. But you see there's a piece missing in this bottom left corner. So there wasn't enough images taken in that area. So now we'd either have to somehow fill it in or crop that area out. So let's do the same thing. I'm just going to choose the best projection, straighten it a little bit. Another thing that I wish that it had is a grid on this screen so that when I'm doing the straightening, I can tell if the verticals and horizontal lines are straight because right now you just have to eyeball it. So I'd like to have a grid. That's on my feature request list. As you can see, there's just a little bit missing in the bottom corner here, and you can use the clone tool to quickly and easily fill that in. Like so. If you'd like to have your stitch panel in the same folder as the originals, you can just drag it there. So I'm gonna do that for this one. And now the final panel is in the same folder. One other thing I want you to make note of is the image size. Take a look at a single image and the file size in pixels. In this case, 6240 wide. Comparing that to the now merged panorama image, which is over 21,600 pixels wide. So it's taken all of those images and made a much larger finished stitch pano. This is the advantage of shooting multiple images and merging them into a panorama instead of just taking a single image and cropping it. So in essence, it's made this file over three and a half times larger. One other quick thing to note is that you can also do vertical panos or some people may call them vertoramas. Here I had some images that I photographed in Cuba of a cathedral from top to bottom. I couldn't get the whole thing in in one frame, so I took three shots. So this process works exactly the same way as making a horizontal pano. 
Let me run these through and let's take a look at how they merge. Here I'm using the spherical. You'll notice if I go to cylindrical, it definitely looks more elongated and Mercator is somewhere in the middle. So if I go with this one and stitch it, when we come to the crop module, you'll notice that it's going to cut off the top of the church or the steeple. If I include the top of the sky, now we've got missing bits up here in the corners and likewise in the bottom. So I'm gonna go back a step and actually try plane projection. It's actually kind of cool. And you'll notice that as I rotate, it's almost shifting the planes in the image, which is why it's called plane. So I'm gonna leave it straight like this. And now you can see that the crop works really well. And I'm not missing the bottom in the corners here or the top corners or the top of the church. And here you go. Now we have a vertical stitched panorama. And like I said before, plane worked better on this one than spherical or cylindrical. So try the different projections if you're not getting the result that you're looking for. One may work better than another on a particular set of images. Something else you can do that's a bit more advanced is an HDR pano, meaning that each image that you take or each scene that you capture for your pano will be a bracketed set of images instead of just one. I've got a set of images just like that here. So when you drop those in, you have the same options up top here, but now you also have a ghost reduction option to go with the HDR merge. In this case, I don't need it. Nothing was moving from frame to frame. So I'm going to merge them and show you what it looks like. You'll see that it's got them separated into each of the bracketed sets. So here's the first image, second, and third. If it got it wrong, you just have to choose skip HDR and you can continue on to stitch your pano. But to merge these as HDR and stitch them, just click continue. And once you get to this window, the rest is familiar. Let me show you the final image. This is what I was able to create. So that's three images of each of three croppings merged together as HDR and pano. Interestingly enough, I tried to do HDR pano merge in Lightroom and it wouldn't work. Likewise, I attempted to do so in Photoshop, but you can't preview what the projection looks like. So I had a little more struggles there as well. So of the three programs that I have that can do panorama merging, Luminar Neo's new extension actually did the best job. Lightroom's version has the left-hand side completely cut off because it couldn't take into account the images on the left. And what I had to do was merge each set as HDR first and then stitch them. And it still didn't come up with the same version. So I'm really happy with this result. The next thing that you can do with the panorama stitching is actually make a panorama from a video. So I was at a powwow last weekend in Saskatchewan, Canada, and I took a video panning across the inside of the arbor or the arena where the powwow was taking place. So let me show you how that works. So here's the video, and you can see that it goes from left to right. And if I play it, you'll hear the powwow drums. So let me just drop this into the stitching module. And in this case, there are no settings to adjust. Just click start. Now you see a slightly different window. You'll see the timeline or frames of the actual video right below. Here, this allows you to start the beginning and the end. So we can play the video and decide if we want to start and stop outside of the beginning and the end of the video. In this case, I'm going to go to the end because I want to crop in just to the edge of this red column here. So I'm going to come in to about there. I can always crop the final image a little bit more. On this side, I want to do the same to come into the green post, like so. Then just click continue and it will try and pull the image from the video. 
keys to taking some panoramic videos are make sure that you keep the horizon in the same place so that you're not angling up or down because then you'll have an image that goes like this and it won't merge very well. Second, make sure that you go slow enough that you don't get any blurring as part of the video. I tried doing one of a stock video and a portion of it actually was out of focus. I'll show you the resulting pano in a moment. And now we're back at the same window and once again, it should be familiar to you now. We can adjust the angle, make sure it's straight. And in this case, the first projection looks pretty good. I'm trying to get this as straight as possible. You'll notice that when you grab and adjust from the middle, the columns on the outside are doing this, right? So I want to try and get them as straight up and down as possible while getting these two columns in the middle straight using the tilt. So I'm trying to find a balance between all of those three things to get it straight. Let's try that. And there's the merged pano. When you zoom in, you'll notice that there may be some ghosting. So you have to make sure that, as I said, you go slowly. And if there are people or objects moving within the frame, you may get double versions of them. Or you might wanna do that on purpose. Before I do the last example though, let me show you the video that came out a little bit blurry. It was a video of a ski jumper. And if you look here in the middle, you can see that this part of the video from here to here is a little bit blurry. So when the person took the video, they went too fast along that section. I tried it a few different times and I still can't get that section sharp. But you'll notice that the ski jumper appears multiple times in this image. This is all the same person. Let me show you how it's done. Here we have a video of a person jogging while the camera is panning left to right. So this will be perfect to make a pano. Drop it into the extension. This time we want to turn on the custom object composition. So just click this to activate it. Now you can see there's a little plus sign. You could click the plus sign or you can just draw a box over the subject on the frames that you want to capture. For example, I'm gonna capture her here. So I'm just gonna drag a box around her like that. Then I'm just gonna grab this blue bar to scrub through the video and go forward a little bit. I wanna capture another section of the scene where she's in a different spot. So once again, I'm just gonna drag a box around her and you can adjust the handles here if you didn't get it quite right. Then let's just keep going and I'm gonna try another one here. So that's three. Let's do another one here, four. And finally one more just before she disappears behind this rock. I could even capture her over here as well like so. Then I'm just going to bring the end in until she disappears right there. Once you get to this screen, you have all the same tools once again to complete the stitching. If you're not happy with your captures of the subject, like in this case, I've got a couple of double images of her. You can just hit the left button here to go back and edit any of the ones that you've chosen. For example, let's just delete that one and see if that helps. Well, that's a little bit better. I have to play with it a little bit more or clone the bits out that I'm not happy with. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to call it good enough. And now you can see there are one, two, three, four, five versions of the runner. I recommend playing around with this feature a little bit. Even take some videos with your phone. Have somebody walk while you film a panorama and see what you can come up with. So what do you think? Are you going to be a panoramic photographer? If you haven't already upgraded to the pro version of Luminar Neo and you need to do so, remember to use my discount code DPM10 to get 10% off when you check out. The same code will work if you need to purchase Luminar Neo or any of the extensions. 
If you enjoyed this video and my teaching style and would like to have a more intense Luminar Neo learning experience, check out Luminar Neo The Complete Course. There's a link for you in the description area below. If you'd like to stay here and watch another video on YouTube, that's always a great idea as well. Check out one of the videos on the screen now. Until next time, take care and happy panorama stitching.